let's rewind and visit some of the key moments in LLM that got to where we are today. The year is 2020, and most of the world still hasn't interacted with an LLM yet. Nobody has heard of ChatGPT, and Anthropic wasn't even a company. Nevertheless, LLM was being worked on by teams of very smart people. I call this year the year of scaling and learning. LLM was hungry for data, but the infrastructure just wasn't big enough to gobble up a large amount of data that was needed to train these models. It needed to scale up and scale up fast. Lucky for us, OpenAI released a model that took the previous 1.5 billion parameters to 175 billion parameters. This giant model, dubbed the GPT-3, was released in June and set the standard for how the rest of the decades would unfold. GPT-3 also demonstrated its ability to learn, more specifically, what's called few-shot learning. You might be wondering, what is few-shot learning? To put it simply, we just didn't have enough data to cover all the use cases, and training is an expensive process, and few-shot learning is a way to solve this very problem. For example, let's say you had 100 essays and one poem in your dataset. With few-shot learning, LLM could pick up on the poetic structure and write beautiful poems without needing to procure more poems and train the model all over again just to teach it how to write a poem. Let's hop to 2021. This is when software developers started to interact with an LLM for the first time. OpenAI created a descendant of GPT-3 called Codex that was specifically trained on code. And with a partnership of GitHub, GitHub Copilot was announced to a select group of people in June 2021. And the term AI programming started to pick up and changed how people coded. Pair programming eventually extended to what's now called vibe coding, which I have a separate video about. OpenAI truly seemed like they were miles ahead in innovation, but that same year, Google started to demonstrate its own model called Lambda. There are two unique things worth mentioning about Lambda. First, it started a debate on whether we actually achieved general artificial intelligence, and it was rumored that Lambda was sentient and people started to wonder. Second thing worth noting is that it was used in a chat application a year and a half before ChatGPT was even released in the market. But for the general public, while Lambda and GPT-3 and even Codex displayed some impressive capabilities, LLM still lacked utility. It's kind of like having a smartphone without any apps. People's lives have been relatively unaffected by what OpenAI and Google was doing in their lab. Meanwhile, in OpenAI, some employees quit to start their own AI company called Anthropic to focus more on AI safety rather than scaling up in size. Let's go to 2022. This was a year where we started to see some changes in public perception of LLM, and the AI race as we know it today really started to unfold. Notably, ChatGPT was finally released to the public in November with GPT 3.5. Within five days of release, nearly 1 million users signed up, and this number has been growing quadrilatically ever since. GitHub Copilot was also released this year to the general public, and from my perspective, this made a huge difference. Up to this point, we had AI doing some cool demonstrations on chats, video recognition, but it didn't create anything worthwhile. With the release of ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot, it seemed like OpenAI was the king of the hill. but there definitely was an attempt made by Google and other companies that made a lot of noise. Google released Palm, which was a model that was three times the size of GPT-3 that was capable of reasoning and coding. Anthropic also brought forward constitutional AI, setting a benchmark on safety and ethics in training LLMs. OpenAI was relying on what's called RLHF, which was resource intensive for humans to rank all their responses and Anthropic wanted to propose a reform in the alignment process and guideline on behavior and human labor. 2023 was the year of expansion from my perspective. There were two main obstacles that had to be overcome, data recency and better reasoning. With mainstream adoption, people using LLM wanted better answers and newer data. Microsoft tried to solve the data recency issue by partnering up with OpenAI to use their newest GPT-4 model for Bing Chat. This was a big deal at the time 
because people not only wanted to try GPT-4, but also an LLM that had full access to a search engine. Common complaints, however, were that it was heavily censored and kind of boring. Elon Musk probably found this kind of censorship unacceptable. He founded a company in March called XAI with the hopes to make LLMs more fun. He made a full commitment to make models that are maximizing truth-seeking. Other companies started to join the party. Anthropic made its first release of Claude. XAI released Grok and Google's new model, Palm 2, demonstrated multimodality, meaning being able to switch between text and images and other forms of media. I gotta say, as a consumer watching all of this unfold, I was excited. The bar kept being raised and these companies were advancing every month in what they had to offer with the newest and the greatest features. One important thing I should mention is Meta's contribution. Meta announced a new model called Llama, which was leaked to the public and created a large swath of grassroots LLMs. What's unique about Meta's model is how compact their size is. At this time, GPT-4 had more than 1 trillion parameters. Compare that to a Llama, their models were available in 7 billion and 65 billion parameters. I think it's easy to say that the bigger the better, but that wasn't always the case. You can certainly do more with less. Alpaca is a great example of this, which was born from Llama's 7 billion model, and being able to run an LLM locally left a big impression that it doesn't always have to be server side. Let's go to 2024. At this time, the models have matured to a point where it was not capable of doing most things pretty well. So I call this year the year of refinement. The challenge was how can we make existing models cheaper and faster to the end consumer? The periphery model was growing fast. AI code editors like Klein started to take shape and people saw how AI can be applied more specifically. We had anything from AI website builder, AI therapist, AI doctor, you name it. And yes, even AI girlfriend. This allowed large companies to focus mainly on creating a cheaper, better and faster model. Cloud 3.5 Sonnet is a great example of this. It was released in 2024 and quickly regarded as one of the best models to do software development. It really hit the sweet spot between quality, cost and speed. I think this model won the hearts of a lot of software developers who wanted to use LLMs for coding. OpenAI, on the other hand, focused on getting a deeper and more sophisticated result. They focused their efforts on creating features like deep research, which was released the following year, and other features like real-time video feeds, Sora, and more. They also increased their product offering by covering a lot of grounds in various scales of models, namely GPT-4.0, the O1 model, and for speed and size, all the variants that exist, mini and turbo options. Google also stepped up their game with their release of Gemini. Up to this point, Google's Palm and Lambda were trailing behind OpenAI, maybe not in its technical capabilities, but certainly in popularity. Gemini 1.5 was a serious contender for GPT-4. It blew everybody out of the water with its massive context window, meaning it can hold more context in a single prompt without needing to use techniques like memory banks and rags. 2025 is here, and we are already seeing new models like Grok 3, Llama 4, Claw 3.7, GPT 4.5, and Gemini 2.5. So far, the models that are coming out seems to be a progressive improvement rather than a radical change in innovation, but I'm sure that we will be seeing something truly exciting coming up.